Welcome to, uh, once again, to um, Passover to Pentecost. I've been pondering whether or not we have dialed down the baptism of the Holy Spirit to a mere dribble of tongues, as Arthur Wallace said. We have promised tongues, and tongues is what we've got. But in the New Testament, what was promised was power, and power was what they got. I want for us to raise the level of expectation and preparation for a greater baptism of the Holy Spirit. You say, Lou, you're only being baptized in the Spirit once, and well, as I read the New Testament, it seems that they were continuously being filled with the Holy Spirit. There were seasons, times when the Spirit would fall again. And I, I believe there are seasons when fresh baptisms come, and you must catch those baptisms. The charismatic movement was one of those moments. I can really say in one sense, I was saved by hearing people speak in tongues. It was a glorious time uh, in the 70s. Uh, the denominational churches were all being baptized in the Spirit. I walked into a living room uh, after Glow meeting. Maybe I shared this before. And they were singing in the Spirit. And all of a sudden, all those years, 22 years of religion, was swept away into a baptism of longing for pres the presence of God. It was the tongue of fire and the spiritual song that moved me so deeply. In one sense, I got saved in an Acts chapter 2 moment. It's interesting the call got started in one sense in an Acts chapter 2 moment where I was invited to speak to these Taiwanese uh, young people at this youth group. Uh, and I spoke the first night. Many of you have heard the story. And the following morning, I was, uh, well, that night those kids came to me and they said, uh, we want to hold an all-night prayer meeting. And so the kids prayed and the preacher slept. And I dreamed of Benny Hinn. And Benny Hinn and I were on stage. And Benny Hinn said to me, Lou, you're done with the ministry. In other words, he said, you can step down off the stage. I stepped down off the stage filled with joy. I had no idea what the dream meant. The following morning, as I was preparing to preach the message that would bring revival, suddenly a young Taiwanese kid began to prophesy, and I've never seen anything like it. The Spirit of God descended with fire and power. Kids falling to the ground, rolling, laughing, encountering the Lord. It was so confusing to me. I'd I wasn't a Pentecostal in that sense. I didn't understand it. I, uh, I, I was sitting in the front row just watching for two hours as kids prophesied, were captured and carried away in God. <laughs> and uh, I just sat there and thinking how rude I didn't even get a preach. <laughs> I went back to my cabin and suddenly the dream came back to me. Benny Hinn wrote a book called The Anointing. When the anointing comes, you're done with the ministry, but the joyful occasion. The Lord was speaking to me. What I am bringing will never be about your preaching. It's what I'm going to do <coughs> when kids pray and when I baptize them in the Holy Spirit. That was 20-some years ago, really about 25, 27 years ago. We need a new baptism of the Holy Spirit. Excuse me. <coughs> I remember being in the early days of the Jesus movement. I was in Maryland, uh, and a man brought a report back from Melody Land, big uh, charismatic center in Southern California at the time. And we were in this gathering. He was telling the testimony of how people were being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And they would be speaking in tongues. And they would speak in tongues like for four days. 
And when I listened to that, something happened. And I, I stood up and I just began weeping. And I said, why can't we have that here? And suddenly everyone began in the room weeping, hungering, longing for God. I don't know how long that went on. And suddenly a person stood up in the crowd and said, I've just been healed. Another stood up. I've just been healed. And it's like the Spirit of God came into that room. And, uh, and it was a healing anointing. I was still pretty depressed because I didn't experience the mighty baptism that I was hoping I would experience. And to this day, I don't feel like I've experienced the baptism that God longs for me to have. Oh, but I thank God for those glorious moments, those seasons. And then I look back to when Arthur Wallace was a uh, Catholic charismatic, I mean, it was a charismatic father uh, of the charismatic movement in England, wrote the great book, uh, God's Chosen Fast. And, um, and he, talked to, he wrote a book on revival. And I remember him coming into a meeting, he spoke, I don't know how many hundreds of people were there in the gathering of believers, the early days of the Jesus movement there. And um, I prayed, I said, Lord, I'm so dissatisfied with my baptism of the Holy Spirit. I said, Lord, please have everyone leave Arthur Wallace so I can talk to him alone. I looked up and everyone just suddenly left him. I walked over to Arthur Wallace and I said, Arthur Wallace, I'm so dissatisfied with the baptism of the Holy Spirit that I've received. He said to me, well, did you receive anything? And I said, yes. I received the Holy Spirit and it had been blessed. He said, then thank God for what you have, but never stop hungering for more. I too am a candidate for a greater baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe it all starts with hunger in these days leading to Pentecost and beyond until Acts chapter two. Let us hunger for a mighty, a greater baptism of love where we have to, like Finney, have to tell God, stop, I can't handle it anymore. Oh God, grant us, our children and our children's children, a new generation, a mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit.